Good morning and welcome to the seventh episode of Coffee with Casey. This morning we have a very special guest, Randy Holtgren, who is the president and CEO of the Illinois Bankers Association. This morning we're going to be talking about finding the right debt collection recovery solution for your organization. We'll also be talking about the importance of partnering with the third party and debt collection rules that everyone should know. So welcome to the webinar this morning. I hope everyone is enjoying a nice cup of coffee. If you'd like to share what kind of coffee you are drinking please feel free to put it in the chat and uh, for those of you who have been here before you do know that this is an interactive webinar so feel free to type your questions into the question feature um, so that they can be answered during today's presentation also today's webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to you following the webinar um, and at the conclusion of today's event, you will be sent a brief survey. Um, it will pop up on your screen at the end of the webinar. Uh, please feel free to share your feedback from today's session. Uh, let us know if there's any future topics that you would like to um, be discussed during the next episode of Coffee with Casey. Um, we do plan to conclude today's uh, session by 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So like I mentioned, we have a special guest today. Uh, Randy is here from the Illinois Bankers Association. Um, before becoming the leader of the IBA, Randy had the privilege of serving in an elected office for, for 24 years. He most recently served in the United States House of Representatives from 2011 to 2019, representing the 14th Congressional District of Illinois. Um, along with his public service, Randy has worked in finance and in law. When he uh, was elected to Congress, he, be, he was the vice president of the Performance Trust Investment Advisors. Welcome, Randy. Would you like to tell the group a little bit about yourself, Randy? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Casey. So good to be with you and uh, appreciate so much partnership with, with you, with Weltman, with your great team and been looking forward to this for a long time. So uh, really good to be with you. Uh, thanks for... Uh, the great mug and t-shirt uh, so i'm uh, i'm decked out today proudly <laughs> got my iba shirt on underneath too so i'm like double oh double. awesome <laughs> yeah, so uh but anyhow it is so good to be with you and i love having coffee anytime but it's great to have coffee with casey today so thank you so much i am uh yeah, I like just dark coffee uh nothing in it um i love different flavors of coffee and I really enjoy getting uh, special coffee when I go places. So just had the privilege of being out in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho last week with my family, had uh, meetings with other bankers out in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, we've got a group called the Central States, which is 18 different state associations that get together a couple times a year. Uh, and uh, we were roughing it out in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho uh, last week, just gorgeous. I'd never been there before. So beautiful. But anyhow, found a coffee shop there. Have to show it off. Uh, Evans Brothers. Uh, and they've got this big timber signature blend that is awesome. It's a dark roast. And so rather than bringing trinkets home from uh, cool trips, I love bringing coffee home as a souvenir. Oh, like nice. my vacation <laughs> a little bit longer. So it's like, oh, yeah, that was so cool. So we, we stayed at a, a beautiful resort out there, but then uh, also brought my wife and two younger boys, my wife and I have four kids, two married, two guys in college. So my two college guys are home and they came out with us and had just an awesome time out there, but uh, spent a couple days in an Airbnb right there in Coeur d'Alene. And uh, one of our favorite things was making some of this coffee and they had a, a hot tub at this little house that we were staying at. And oh, it was fabulous oh, nice. talking about it. So uh, other things, you know, I love to travel. My wife and I have been married 32 years. Uh, and uh, so really for, First time, uh, our youngest went off to college a year ago, so it's been really fun. Empty nest, uh, I've traveled a lot in my career, but usually I had to do it by myself. And so it's been really fun uh, to be able to travel with my wife and family when they can do it with me. Uh, also on this trip, uh, my boys and I love to fish. And so we, uh, we flew out to Denver, drove up to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, but found rivers along the way where we did fly fishing and had just a wonderful time and probably the highlight was coming back stopped in yellowstone on saturday spent the whole day in yellowstone oh, fishing wow. around yellowstone there's four different kinds of trout you can catch in yellowstone and we caught all four of them uh last saturday so just amazing 
We also got about a thousand mosquito bites uh, that we brought home with us, which is, that's just, you know, part of it. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you, you got to pay the price. You know, we, we donated our blood uh, to uh, out in Montana, but also love to golf, love to read history. I'm currently down in Springfield, Illinois. That's where our headquarters are. And so uh, it's hard to be um, a lawyer, politician from Illinois, and not be a huge fan of Abraham Lincoln uh, over my shoulder here. Uh, this was uh, Abraham Lincoln certainly called Springfield his hometown, spent most of his life here in Springfield. So we've got some wonderful places to learn more about Abraham Lincoln, his uh, home that where he raised his family, but also there's a, a really great presidential museum here in Springfield. So if people are ever passing through uh, Springfield, it's it's definitely worthwhile stopping by to check out the Abraham Lincoln Museum. So anyhow, uh, other things, love <laughs> standing on a beach uh, or standing in a river. Those are my two favorite things to do. Awesome. Now, uh, Randy, can you tell us a little bit about the IBA? I'd love to. So proud of this association. Uh, we are a banking association, one of the older banking associations in the country, founded in 1891, won by a group of banks. We are an inclusive banking association. So if you're a bank or a banker, we would love to have you be a member of the Illinois Bankers Association. So we represent literally the smallest banks in Illinois are members and the largest banks in Illinois are members. And for me, coming from sort of the other side, uh, serving as a legislator, as an elected official, working with associations, I saw the value of being able to get good information. Uh, that one of the biggest things I faced, the challenges I faced, problems I faced as a member of Congress or even in the state legislature was the volume of information. There's so much stuff, so many shiny objects, so many moving um, pieces of legislation. It's almost impossible. And so you really need associations who can dive deeply on issues and also play it out. You know, one of the things that I saw that was so frustrating in my service was, uh, you know, something bad would happen and elected officials feel like we've got to do something. We've got to pass a bill. We've got to do pass a new law. Well, maybe, but not always. And so it was really the associations that would kind of play it out of saying, yes, you know what, we really do need to change this or no, you know what, this was a an outlier situation. Let's wait and see. The problem so oftentimes when the, when, legislatures or Congress is reactive is unintended consequences that come from that that play out over the next uh, year. So super proud of the Illinois Bankers Association. We really are the only association that is advocating for banks on the federal level, the state level, and the local level in Illinois. And that is so important. City, city of Chicago is really important for us, but it's different. It's not the whole state. Uh, you know, some banks in Mattoon, Illinois are very different or uh, different parts of Illinois face different challenges than Chicago, but also some similar challenges. And so that's what we try and do as an association is provide education, training and advocacy, but then also finding ways for our bankers to connect with each other of how they can work together, but also connect with other great experts like you uh, and the, the great people that you work with for them to realize that it's, it's tough uh, to be a banker but you don't have to do it by yourself. There are incredible resources. And it's one of the things I'm so proud of with the Illinois Bankers Association is being able to connect our bankers with great resources, with other great associate members, preferred vendors, different groups like this, where we do a lot of due diligence of uh, building these relationships and kind of putting our stamp saying, hey, this is someone you ought to talk to. If you've got a challenge or question, this is a person that's uh, someone who really can provide excellent help and advice to you. And our banks love that. So anyhow, that's a little about, about the association. We have offices in Chicago and Springfield. We've got about 30 different people that work for the association. Uh, we represent um, literally hundreds and hundreds of banks across Illinois with thousands of locations and literally over 100,000 people who work in banking in Illinois. So I've been doing this for about three and a half years and absolutely love it. Awesome, thank you, Randy. And with that, we'll go ahead and we'll dive into our first topic today, which is developing a debt recovery strategy for your organization. Um, so the first thing that kind of happens in debt collection, right, is you have defaulted accounts. So what, what does your organization do with those defaulted accounts? Do you have a process for that? Um, do they go to a separate um a separate department within your organization do you have specialized collectors that you employ or do you do you is your is your plan for your organization to ship those accounts off to a third party 
Um, but the first question you do have to ask when you're trying to come up with your recovery solution is what, what are you going to do with those accounts? Um, but most importantly, um, before you have a defaulted account, you want to make sure you know who your customers are, that you're gathering the correct data for them, driver's license, uh, driver's licenses, phone numbers, places of employment. So when credit is given, you have all this information that you're going to need when hopefully the account doesn't default. But if it does, um, you're, you have this information. You can then follow up on missed payments. You can send reminders to your customers, um, send letters or calls. Um, now, uh, with uh, new legislation that, uh, and new rules that we have here in Illinois. You can also send emails. Um, that's something that we talked about in the last episode of Coffee with Casey. So if you missed that, feel free to go back and check it out. Um, but the biggest thing is you do wanna prioritize recovery and collection within your organization. You don't want those defaulted accounts to just kind of sit there and gather dust. Um, can I jump in real quick? If, what, one of the things, you know, I just feel like this is such an important topic for banks right now. I travel around and visit banks. And it's one of these topics that really affects banks in two ways, certainly their own customers and making sure they've got information, you know, that is going to be helpful. Obviously they want these to perform. They want their customers to succeed and do well, but they, so it, it's so important for them to understand this uh, for their own business, but also the business of their customers and helping customers be prepared for you know the reality of challenges that are going to happen uh the unforeseeable so again uh i think what you're saying is so valuable so important certainly for banks themselves and i talked to a lot of banks over the last few years where it, it's been a little unreal of how well things have been performing and it's just not going to be that way forever so to prepare <laughs> for things turn the other direction uh, is so important, but also to prepare their customers, uh, small businesses that, that they work with to be prepared for that as well. Uh, it's again, why this is so timely and so important to give this information. Thank you, Randy, I appreciate that. Um, also, it's also important within your organization to be able to um, develop a procedure to identify maybe recurrent delinquent accounts. So you can contact those customers, see exactly what's going on, um, see if there's sort any sort of modification or other plan that you could put them on to help them um, pay back their debt that they have. Um, also good for all organizations to have established timelines for payments and, and set up internal alerts when an overdue payment does pop up on an account. Um, and also, you know, it's always important to weigh the cost of collection with the actual amount that you might be able to, to recover. I mean, there's some people that do just, you know, hit really hard times and as much as you um, remind them to pay and things like that they unfortunately they might just be headed for bankruptcy so sometimes not all accounts can be collected but it is important to part partner with potentially a third party or a trade organization to kind of help you set up this uh, procedure for your organization to kind of identify defaulted accounts so that you can pursue potentially legal action if 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 i if defaulted accounts cannot be handled internally Um, and that takes us right into our next topic, um, the importance and benefits of partnering um, with a third party. Um, so for, for collections, there's lots of compliance, um, lots of day-to-day -day calls, letters, things like that that are being done to contact delinquent customers. So the benefit of partnering with a third party um, debt collection agency or law firm is you can reduce staffing costs for your organization because it's extremely expensive to maintain in-house collectors or an in-house collection department, um, to maintain compliance. Uh, rules are constantly changing within our industry. Um, and because of that, there's consistent and ongoing training, different certifications that might be available for staff. Um, also, a third-party organization, this is, their, this is their expertise, right? This is what they do every single day. Um, so they're going to have effective collection strategies. They're going to have expert advice. They'll have legal support. Um, most full service collection agencies can also handle the collection process, which is very, a lot like what my law firm is. Um, Welt Weltman, Weinberg and Reese is a law firm and also a collection agency. We have 90 plus years of experience in collections and litiga litigation. We have a, a partner or attorney oversight over every single business unit that we have. Um, and that would be consumer collection, consumer collections, commercial collections, 
bankruptcy, foreclosure, collateral recovery. So we have oversight over all of those different business units. Um, any type of collection that your organization might have, we, we would be able to help you with that because we're, we're a single source for all collection needs. Um, we also have an internal compliance department and that's overseen by a corporate compliance officer. Yeah, Casey, um, I can jump yep, in quickly. Go right ahead, uh, Randy. No, it's I, I've again as I uh, hear from our bankers what some of their biggest challenges are. Still, um, top of mind is talent. Uh, is getting people to be able to do the work, especially frontline folks, uh, and to keep good people, but also to make sure that they are focused on the things that they are best at doing, which is serving their customers, uh, providing value to their customers. And again, this is where it is so important of making these decisions uh, that, or understanding that you don't have to do this by yourself uh, as a bank or as a banker, that there are wonderful resources out there. And oftentimes, you know, it's so much better to, to hire somebody who already has an expertise rather than to take somebody who's already stretched, already, uh, needs to focus on serving customers and say, we need you to learn this other skill. Uh, you know, it's just so much more cost effective to have a relationship with an expert like you, like your team, uh, to be able to step in and provide these services right away. And again, it's, it's one of the things uh, that uh, we talk about, again, one of the benefits of uh, professional organizations and members with professional organizations is these connections uh, that um, not only do you not have to put your talent who is already stretched or find somebody to hire somebody who can do this uh, when you really want to be focused on serving customers and bringing in new customers uh, with your employees but uh, you know if you can use your association your professional organization to make connections for you to make introductions like hopefully we're doing today uh, with mm -hmm. you and others at Weltman to say uh, this is worth a connection point worth a conversation and incredibly valuable uh, to be able to hire someone who from day one can step in and provide the service that you need rather than taking somebody away from uh, what they're already doing of serving customers. So it's one of the things that we we love doing. There's other things that we'll show here that, uh, you know, our members don't have to be members. It's a voluntary thing. They pay dues to be members of the Illinois Bankers Association. And it's not, it's not inexpensive, but we hope it's valuable. Uh, that is our hope every day is to provide value to our members. Uh, and it is, it's, it's the training, it's the education, it's conferences, it's compliance events. We've got fantastic attorneys that aren't focused on what you focus on, but instead really focus on regulation and compliance and the challenge of do, dealing with exams, uh, making sure that our banks are prepared for that. We also, uh, through our conferences, hope our banks will meet other bankers and find ways that they can be working together uh, to serve their communities and their customers better, but then also to be that voice for banking uh, that I saw it serving in Congress, also serving in the state legislature, that I was on the Financial Services Committee in Washington, I was on the Financial Institutions Committee in Springfield. Reality was the people who served on those committees with me weren't bankers. They really didn't understand banking and yet they were making decisions that absolutely affected the ability of banks to serve their customers. And so that's why associations are so important to be that voice, to be literally every single day having an ear to the ground of what's happening in Springfield or Chicago or Washington DC uh, to be able to respond quickly to support good ideas and good legislation, but also to push back and try and stop or change legislations that's going to damage the ability for for banks or business to be able to serve customers mm -hmm. and randy you mentioned that you have um, conferences and educational opportunities um, through the iba can you just go into that a little bit more and let um, the listeners know uh, when those conferences are or how they can find out more information about them thanks casey yeah, absolutely so the best way is really just our website we've got a great website illinois.bank uh, is our website. Uh, so you can't forget it, you can't miss it. Uh, so just uh, search Illinois.bank and uh, or Illinois Bankers Association. We've got conferences throughout the year. Uh, we've got compliance events that literally are some of the best in the, the country, uh, our compliance work that our uh, attorneys do, specifically focused on banking law. I've talked to uh, other lawyers and um, lawyers who are general counsel for banks who look forward every single year to our December compliance conference. They've got literally a, a shelf full of 
folders uh, that they have from our compliance conference that they that's kind of their bible of bank to go back to to be able to look back and see uh, what's the latest uh, what is legislation that has gone through uh, in illinois or washington dc so we've got throughout the year compliance conferences we also have other we've got an ag banking conferences coming up uh, in August, we've got a Women in Banking conference coming up in September. We've got Bank Tech in October, which is uh, all how technology is impacting banking, which is so significant. We've got uh, Midwest uh, Bank Leaders event that's in November, uh, which brings together CEOs and C-suite members of banks from across the state. We also just finished our annual convention that we had in Chicago. Uh, we were really to do it with the Ohio Bankers League, which is so cool too, to not only bring together bankers from Illinois, but bankers from Ohio and realize what, how can we learn what's working there? What could work here? How can we work together? Realizing again, that if we're one voice, uh, we're much stronger. Uh, we have a much better resonance with our elected officials and uh, be able to ultimately do what we want to do. And one of the things I love about banking is it's all about helping people make their dreams come true. I think about it, you know, every key that I've had, whether it's to college or to a house or to a first car or to um, retirement, whatever. So oftentimes a banker has been involved in helping people pursue their dreams. So we want to make sure that bankers can continue to do that. So that's what our events are about is training, educating. And again, our website is the best place to go to see where those events are, to see the dates of things that are coming up and hopefully to register and try them out. Okay, and then as a member of the IBA, do you get discounted registrations for these conferences? Absolutely. Uh, so we do open up most of our conferences to to anybody to non members as well, but it's uh, more expensive for someone who is a non member. So it's it's a significant discount uh, for members. Some things are free to members. Some things are significantly discounted to members. So there absolutely is a benefit uh, for being a member. But we also want to make sure that we're serving all bankers, uh, even those whose banks aren't members of the IBA, that if they see something that's valuable. So all the time we have bankers who see something. It uh, just happens that their bank is not a member of the IBA, but they want to be a part of this education conference. They absolutely can do that. It might be a little bit more expensive for them to do it. But again, we hear over and over again that the value far outweighs the cost that they have for these different events. So we encourage people to take a look. Oh, I'm amazed uh, of all that we do, literally, you know, almost every day, for sure, every, multiple times a week. We've got events, we've got education, we've got webinars, we've got other things that are available to bankers to be able to, to grow and learn and become better. One of the other things I'll say real quickly too, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's so important for, for your work, but for our work as well, uh, is financial literacy and training up young people uh, in middle school, high school, college, uh, to see that they need to be good consumers of their own finance, that they need to understand credit, debt, uh, investment, all of this. And the sooner that they can understand it, the better, the more opportunities that they'll have, that all of us want people to succeed. And uh, we want people from every community in Illinois to see that uh, there's opportunity for them, that when they can understand their own finances, when they can understand the market, when they, they can understand debt, the power of debt, power of um, their, their credit, understanding uh, credit ratings and things like that, all of this is so important. So we do a lot of focus on training up young people and helping our bankers work with schools with grade school middle school high school also have scholarships for people who are interested in going into banking and finance so these are other things again if we come together we can have such a bigger impact than individually just kind of one-offs of one banker trying to do coming together with an association you can have a more significant impact yeah that's great thank you randy we did have a couple questions come through so i just want to make sure i try to answer those before we hit our time um, one of the questions was, um, what should we do with a first payment default? I think that's kind of, um, there's a couple different things you could do with that. Um, the first thing I would suggest is contacting your customer to see if there's, you know, a special situation that's going on there. Um, I think uh, going right to litigation or something like that on a first payment default might be a little bit aggressive, but um, it's all what your organization wants to do and how you decide that you want to pursue collection and recovery of first payment default accounts. Um, if there's fraud or something like that involved, something like that might be a little bit different. Um, another question that we received um, is, what can I do if a customer tells us not to contact them again? Um, typically with that, we would call that a cease account. 
and we would recommend that you you turn that account over to a law firm for collection. Um, but again, uh, it all depends kind of on what your organization wants to do for debt collection recovery on those type of cease accounts. And I think I think that was it. Um, we have a few more minutes left. If anyone wants to throw in any other questions for me or for Randy, um, there was there's a few slides that we didn't get to today, um, but you will everyone will be sent those after um, after the webinar concludes. Um, so you'll have access to those. And if any questions come up, I'm going to flip to the very last slide so that everyone can jot down my contact information and Randy's contact information. Um, so that if you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to either one of us um, after uh, we conclude the webinar today. Um, I will say I something too, Casey. If I, other but go I ahead, say Randy. something real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I really would encourage people to go through the slide deck uh, that's included in this. And I'm sorry I talked too much that we weren't oh, able to. Get, uh, but it, it's so good. I learned so much information in there, and it really is. It's some latest information. So I really encourage people to take the time to go through the slide deck that Casey and her team prepared. It is fantastic and some really good information that you're going to be glad you've, you've got a hold of with some latest legislation that's passed uh, very specific uh, to collection and recovery. So I uh, really encourage people to take some time to, to review that and then respond certainly to Casey uh, or others there if there's questions that come up. Thank you, Randy. And I didn't see any other questions come in. So with that, I'll wrap everything up. Like I mentioned, there'll be a survey that'll pop up um, on your screen. So feel free to provide any feedback. And thank you all again. And thank you, Randy. We really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Casey. Thanks for the great partnership. Encourage uh, bankers to reach out to Casey or others uh, just to build those relationships to get help. Know that you don't have to do this yourself, uh, that uh, there's wonderful people who are experts who can help you be successful. So uh, take advantage of that, that opportunity of working with great experts like Casey and others at Weltman. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you.